Hello there, I'm Black Bright, and as you know, I tend to talk about, well, I just really update you about what's going on, and if I get any new legislation or anything to do with immigration or deportation, I like to let you in on it. <clears throat> so now I've um, got the heads up with the new, in the price increase for spouse visas. And you know, like when you... Um, are changing your car insurance or you go to a shop and well not even a shop but some kind of service and they're really really nice to you until they get what you want and then once you've got yourself into a contract especially like these some of these phone contracts once you've got yourself into a contract you know the kind of customer service deteriorates you, do you know what I mean well that's what I felt when I was reading about the increase for the spouse visas and I'm going to tell you why. Um, they changed 29th of March, which was just last week. Was it last week? Was the 10th? The week before last. So they, they uh, was increased on the 29th of March 2019. Spouse visa now is £1,523 if submitted outside the UK. Um, you would apply for that under the family visa category, which allows you to reside with the family members, e.g. your spouse or your partner, um, in the UK for over six months. If you're submitting an application inside the United Kingdom to increase your stay as a spouse from your current visa, the application cost is 1033 And it is known as an FLR. In. For those of you who saw the um, email, not the email, <clears throat> the YouTube video about understanding immigration terms. Uh, this visa allows new authorization to reside in the United Kingdom for two and a half years, two years and six months. And it can be prolonged by the FLRM visa form. And you can add children up to the age of 18 on the application. And for every child, or should I say dependent, because they have to be under 18, you'll be charged of £1,523 for each child. You also pay the immigration health surcharge, provide you with access to health care, and that costs £1,000. Applications made both inside and outside the United Kingdom is the same price. Processing time. Well, if you want it really quickly, you pay £573 on top of that. That's for the priority visa. And for the super fast visa, you pay about £800 and you can get that within a day. Now, why did I make the analogy with the um, supermarket, not the supermarket, the car insurance or whatever kind of insurance it is when they're trying to sell you? that insurance. I made that analogy because it, it it's almost like um, it's almost like they're giving you it's almost I, I can't even explain it. It's almost like all of this money that you have to pay out and it's only for two and a half years. And then after two and a half years, what happens with the state of the country the way the state of the country is now? after you've invested all that money if you're bringing in your family. I mean, if there's a family of four, that's nearly... One, two, three. I mean, that's nearly um, £6,000. So is that a good investment? Is it worth bringing your spouse and your children over for just two and a half years when there's no guarantee that you can stay any longer? I can understand them charging 1500 you know, for like 10 years stay but for two and a half years that's a lot of money anyway like they say they're only looking for the wealthy to come in the country so maybe that's why um, the prices are so high because if you can't afford to stay here you can't afford to stay so it's like you know when you go to a shop and they say if you if you have to look on the price you can't afford it so I guess this is a similar situation. Anyway, um, these spouse visas is, um, uh, well, 
It's not appropriate, of course. They've got this disclaimer. It's not appropriate for those who have leave to remain in the UK, restricted by the Home Office, or if you've been denied leave to remain by the Home Office. If you've been deported, eradicated or otherwise forced to leave the United Kingdom, I think that goes without saying. Um, if you've overstayed a period of leave in the United Kingdom and you see the word period, that means any amount. They, you know, even if they'd said like 14 days or 28 days, but they said a period, which means any amount of overstaying, you cannot um, apply to bring your spouse or your children over here. Now, let me interject here now, because what I don't understand is if you are claiming that we've got too many people in the country, too many immigrants in the country, why are you teasing them and saying that they must pay to come in the country when you're trying to get rid of them or you don't want them here? I don't understand that. I don't understand why you would encourage people, even if they're paying, to come into the country unless you're using them to get money. I mean, what other sense is there? I mean, the whole cry is too much immigration, too much people coming out. And yet you're telling people if they've got the money, they can pay, um, pay for their, their spouse, pay for their kids. They can all come over. So it's defeating the object. You're supposed to be reducing net, um, net migration, not increasing it. Anyway, some more reasons, of some more of those who cannot take advantage of this spouse visa. If you've been denied a visa for Canada, Australia, New Zealand or the United States of America. If you've been interrogated, put on trial or imprisoned by the police or committed a crime in the UK or elsewhere. So that's anywhere. Interrogated by police. That's a bit of a strange one to put in there, don't you think? Because you can be interrogated by police um, because they're trying to find out some information. It doesn't mean that you are at fault, I didn't think. Anyway, maybe I'm wrong. You've been denied a visa for the United Kingdom. You have exhausted criminal sentence in any nation. You have unexhausted, sorry criminal sentence in any nation. You have pledged a criminal offence in any country. Those, that makes sense. You've been denied leave to enter the United Kingdom. So yeah, of course, if you've got any criminal, criminal, um, criminal, whatever you call it, criminal convictions, you're not allowed to stay. If you've done anything that's inappropriate, like overstay, you cannot take advantage of this spouse and family visa. Um, since 29th of March 2019, additional costs on top of that um, is a TB test. Um, I'm not, not quite sure which countries um, have got tuberous sclerosis in them, but if they have, you're supposed to have your um, injection against that. And if they don't do it in that country that it's in, you have to go to a neighbouring country or a border country. You can't come here without the TB test. We don't want anybody coming over here with tuberculosis, if that's how you pronounce it. Life skills test. Um, that is for English language proficiency at A1 level. I thought it was B1. Now it's A1. I don't know if they've increased it. They're really looking for the creme de la creme. That's £150. Degree holders um, tutored in English language and recognised by NARIC. <laughs> They'll need a confirmation letter from the from the organisation or from the institution. Another hundred and fifty pounds just to get a confirmation that they've done that course. Hundred and fifty pounds. How can you justify? charging £150 for a confirmation letter. How? Anyway, moving on. Documents requiring translation. So depending on which country you're coming from, if you have any documents, original documents that require translation, they must be in um, the mother tongue and in English and authenticated, verified, stamped, notarized, whatever it is you need to prove that it's, it, it is an authentic document. 
that's a must. Um, and all translations must have the full name and contact number of the translator and the address. Okay, so I guess they'll be getting in touch with the translator just to make sure that they're authentic. All your, all your documents need to be organised. You can't just bung them all together and stick them in an envelope. They need to be like page one, two, three, four and five. The same way you print them off is the same way that they must be submitted. They have to be completed in an orderly fashion. Mind you, if it's done online, I don't understand why they're saying it must be organised. Maybe it's the attachment they're talking about. They're probably talking about the attachments have to be in an organised fashion. Maybe, you know, like if you're attaching a birth certificate and on the form it might say, what are you attaching evidence of, a, you know, if they might say birth certificate. Maybe you should have A1 on the form and then, you know, look paper clip with a post-it note with A1 on the actual birth certificate. If you're submitting... Um, uh, let me think. My brain sometimes goes a bit wobbly. Um, if you're submitting pay slips, that would be Appendix 2. And then you'd put Appendix 2 where it talks about it on the form so that they have they can cross reference what you're referring for, referring to. That is what I believe they mean by organised so that they can see, you know, it's all numbered nicely, not on the original documents, of course, never mark original documents, never put any kind of pencil, no pencil, no pen on an original document. You just put, a, and you never staple an original document. You just put, a, you know, get some of those post-it notes, um, just write on the post-it note what it relates to on the form. Um, and all obligatory documents must be provided. That means there will be some documents that they say you have to submit. Make sure you submit them. Don't miss off one. If you haven't got all of them, just leave the application until you have all of them. Don't say you're going to send one later because they're not doing this. Um, they, there's the, the Home Affairs Committee is trying to get them to reduce um, all the work. And they're trying to get them not to reject every application that's not correct. But that hasn't happened yet. So as of now, if there's something incorrect, you lose your money if they've accepted the application. And, you know, you, it's just going to be rejected and you have to wait another 10 years or whatever it is, five years, whatever it is. So try and do things properly and in an orderly fashion. If it is handwritten for any reason, make sure it's done neatly and legibly so that they can understand. You, if you need help, you go to a lawyer or you go to a friend or you go to somebody whose literacy is very, very high and who can who knows what the forms require. And then you submit it. So if you think that bring in your spouse and your children are over, if you've got two kids, if you think the whole family is worth eight grand for two and a half years, then fine. But remember, in another two and a half years, it might have gone up and you have to think, wow, that's a lot of money. And the thing is, is that it's not like you could just come in and do as you like. There's still all these kind of stipulations. You still got the concern at the end of the two and a half years. Is it going to be renewed? What's going to happen? So it's an expensive, like I said, England, like America, they're looking for the creme de la creme. They're not looking for poor people. So if you're struggling to pay that money, they don't want you. So this is the way, you know, like in London where, you know, they've kind of priced people out with the house prices. It's a, sim it's a similar thing. They can price people out with the price of the, um, with the price of the application forms. That's just my opinion. Who am I to say? Anyway, in all cases, always get an immigration lawyer. Make sure you find them off of www.gov.uk, um, the Home Office, or um, who else? Citizens Advice Bureau. There's lots of people who can actually get you authentic and registered lawyers who can help you if you're having difficulty. And that's all for now. Bye bye.